Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, as you can see, this time looking at the Game Gear. Um, there'll be another video I'll upload later for this. It might be a week or two away yet, yeah, because I'm, you know, I did say I'm going to take a bit of a break. This is just a bit of an exception, really, because it's something I'm doing. Um, I want to get it up there sooner rather than later. Um, but we're going to swap out the screen in this. Mick Will, um, the guy who did the um, replacement screen for the Atari Lynx, has done one for the Game Gear. Um, as you can see, it's a bit bashed up. This I've, I've done some cap uh, fixes to this already, which is why I said there'd be another video going up for this as well. Um, I think I'm probably going to swap out. I think you can get replacement fronts for these. Um, you know, the actual screen plastic there. So I might get one of those. It's an unusual one. This it's flat. It's not got like the beveled. The other ones are sort of beveled upwards a little bit. Um, so it's a bit unusual in that sense. But yeah, it's pretty scratched up. But if I switch this on, I'll show you what it's like before. So we've got before and after. So this is Gunstar Heroes. Awful reflection of me there in the screen. So yeah, that's about as good as it gets picture-wise since it's completely new cap set on it. Um, they don't give a particularly great display these game gears. I actually prefer the Lynx screen, if I'm completely honest. It's a bit loud though, isn't it? I'll just turn it down a bit. Yeah, I prefer the Lynx screen um, to these, if I'm honest, the original Lynx screen. Um, you can see the streaks and things down it that, you, that are typical with that type of technology. Um, yeah, and what on this particular screen, you can see one, one segment is brighter than the other two, so it probably needs swapping out anyway. Um, this is actually my third Game Gear. The other two have got pretty good, well, better screens than this one. So this is the one I've chosen as the camera anyway. Um, so I've switched that off. I'll show you the mod. I'll just move the camera over here. Uh, you can see it's pretty sweet. I'll be careful not to touch this. Um, yeah, he's done an amazing job again. Everything's, you know, really well manufactured there. I mean, look how small the connections are on that ribbon there. Really nicely soldered and stuff. Um, screen, obviously, screen protector. So that's it. It's just this single little um, module that's all sort of joined together and stuff. You can see he's got some little adhesive pads or something inside there, just the right height separate the screen from the uh, PCB but it's all just contained on this one little um, PCB um, so if I just have a look at the instructions here there's two sheets for this because there are two different revisions of the game gear there's the two ASIC version which all three of my game gears actually are two ASICs um, and there's a single ASIC I think he's done a revision to this he's saying there's a jumper or something missing off this uh, instruction sheet for one ASIC so um, hopefully that will be corrected by the time you get one of those if you've got a one ASIC game gear um, so it's very much like the Atari, S, uh, Atari Lynx in some sense, the Atari Lynx um, mod um, where you remove a load of components that are not required or may well interfere and I guess you know it's going to be a combination of the two things but um, there's an awful lot more components on here to remove and it, I would say it's a little, looks a little bit more difficult than the Atari Lynx mod um, I mean you've got a load of resistors, R34, 33, 32, 30, 29, 41, 38, 44, 43, 9 in total. Um, you remove a coil, which is, where's that, there. Um, and then it says remove Q6 and Q2 transistors. So we've got uh, Q2 there, Q6 there, a couple of small SMD. And these are all SMD components mostly, I think, apart from that coil. Um, but the transistors and resistors are all SMD. Uh, remove capacitors C32 and C33. Um, yeah, that's that git, that C32. To, the one that's very hard to get to there but yeah I swapped all these out anyway so it should be easy to get get those out uh, it's just interesting to remove them um, that's all right um, I'll have some spares for something else um, remove the L uh, LCD it says pull off the FPC carefully I think it means the flexible um, uh, it's a flexible ribbon and it says carefully from the PCB like tape now don't confuse that with this board here he's not talking about the ribbon here he's talking about the ribbon that goes to the uh, game gear. Um, I don't think it's shown here. Um, it might be on the other side, is it? No, it goes here, where you've got this little ribbon. Uh, you know, your ribbon goes there to an edge, and it's just it's glued on, I think, with hot glue. So you just peel it off like tape. I think that's what he's, he means there, which is uh, from the PCB like tape. Um, so you've removed your old screen effectively, and then it says remove the middle plastic screw mounting off the upper housing with pliers. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure. There's a couple of bits of shield in there. You can see that bit of metal shielding, I think. And there's some metal prongs. And he's suggesting that you remove all four of those metal bits there, I think. But also, it's just um, plastic screw mounting upper casing. So, presumably, it fits 
there, sort of in the middle of the uh, case, that needs chopping off. Um, it's perhaps just going to clip the PCB if that's not if that's not removed. I'm not sure which one that is. Is that the one here? Yeah, it's that one. So you're not going to put your screw back in there because the little post is going to be chopped off, I think, because there's no other mountains in there as far as I understand. Um, so yeah, once you've got those out of the way, it says remove CFL lamp and fuses FU1 and FU2. Um, and I did a quick look around here, I couldn't see FU1 and FU2 on this diagram, so I'm like, well, I think what he means is, you know, the, the, the lamp is across here and it's soldered to the board and it's probably marked FU1 and this one, this side is probably marked FU2, I think. I suspect, I don't know, but anyway, that's the thing, it's remove, a case of removing the lamp unit as well as the screen. Um, so you're going to save some power there from the backlights, you know, you've not got the backlights on. Um, and then it says, now check 5 volt with voltmeter on VCC point. If the voltage exceeds 5.45 volts, repair your game gear. Um, so yeah, basically we're just checking the 5 volt level before you start really. Um, I assume that it will all power up like that, but obviously you're not going to get anything on, on the display. But uh, yeah, so we'll do that anyway. Um, and then there's the step, step 2 is the VGA connector. Um, I should have zoomed in on this really, sorry, but you know, there's not much to say, I'm reading it out I guess anyway. Um, the VGA connector, I'm going to do that in a separate video, like I'm going to go back to with my Atari links and you know, revisit that. Um, you get the little bag here with the uh, VGA connector and the bolts and things and washers and nuts and stuff, so you can do that later. It, it really is as simple as on the, the, the board itself, you've got these pads here and you've got red, green, blue, vertical sink, horizontal sink and ground which I think, if we just have a look at the board here, you can see them um, there and they're just masked by this ribbon so when you come to do that bit, what I would suggest you do is carefully um, li you know, disconnect the, the, the ribbon here, the flat flex I don't know whether it's one of those ones you lift or whether it's ones you pull forward, it looks like you might lift it um, I'm not sure, I don't do anything with that just yet but when you get to that point that's what I would do, I'd move that ribbon out of the way and then just carefully lift it up before you do the solder in here even consider perhaps sticking on the underside of this and on the top side some, um, uh, what's it called that, heat proof tape well, mine's gone blank, it's yellow, ye yellow type of um, oh god my mind's capstan tape, that's it, my mind uh, just went blank there for a minute yeah, mask that off with some capstan tape on both sides as well as lifting it just in case you accidentally just touch the edge of it with your iron because you don't want to do that, you'll destroy the thing very very quickly um, so if we flip the page over, I'll just put this back down here into that uh, into static um, yeah, step three, uh, power and backlight knob so um, yeah, it's pointing at some more points here where you need to connect to your VCC um, and your ground um, and then join up obviously to the, the little LCD board there some connections here on the um, what is normally the backlight switch, you know the contrast thing or whatever it is um, so there's a couple of points there, one of the centre, I think you connect VCC to one and ground to the other and then your backlight goes to the board I think somewhere there's a backlight connection on the board um, it's probably marked somewhere on here, I don't know it is. oh there it is, backlight yeah, so it's the top one of those three. But you can see there's a lot more pads. You know, you've got the, the ones here for the video signals, uh, like you got on the tarot links, and you've got your out. You know, as we've shown previously, the stuff that goes to your VGA connector. But you've also got the backlight um, pad down there. You've got a uh, clock, 32 megahertz, um, GG slash SMS. So that's your Game Gear SMS sense, uh, which goes to one of the pins um, on your cart port. Well, it's going to be one of these. Is it carp? Yeah, it is there. It's that top second one there. Um, what else is the? Da, 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 da. Yeah, the C sync. Um, I think that's on the other side actually. Flip back over here. Um, yeah, there you go. It's marked there. T2 test point two C sync. So there's one or two wires going from the opposite sides of the board and stuff. But you can join the wires and things to this mod as the, one of the last steps by the looks of things because as we move on to the last part here, I'll skip some of this out, you, you are you are connecting some of the buttons up as well, apparently button 1, button 2 and button 3 there are three pads, uh, where are they, on the mod here, I think you've got, you've got button 1, button 2 and then button 3 so, um, and those connect to the buttons I think on your game gear so you can press, um, just reading this quickly, I've not fully understood that but if you hold down 
A, B or 1 and 2, I think it is actually marked on the, on the Game Gear, and start those three buttons at the same time or swap between the different graphics modes there with the X's here. Scan lines on VGA, on retro style, on 3.5 inch LCD off. So you, you toggle in a couple of different modes there with the buttons, that's quite a nice feature. Um, but moving on to the final part of this here, he's saying here, slide the Game Gear mod onto the G Game Gear PCB and solder the data line. So yeah, it looks like you're going to make it flush. Um, and then if we just look at this here, and I'm assuming it goes that way, looking at the pins and things. Um, yeah, and you can see a solder point there, so you're going to solder from the motherboard onto there. And then there's another one on the other side here, this little um, where the thumb is, contact, and I think down here as well. I think those are the only three, there might be one over it, and there's a little bit over here, that probably will join up as well, I think. Um, so it's going to be permanently part of your motherboard then, I guess. Um, and I would suspect at that point, that's probably the best point to start joining your wires up, because it's in place, you can get your wire lengths nice and short, they're not going to, you know, you can wire them, you can route them and stuff through little gaps and things, and things aren't going to be tight and stuck up and all the rest of it, if you see what I mean. Um, not sure what he's trying to indicate here. Um, at the bottom, it's got PCB Game Gear mod as the top layer, and then there's what's this tape? I'm not sure what the tape is. And then it says PCB Game Gear. All right, so it's going to go in between and three and a half inch LCD. Right, I understand what he means now. It's like a sandwich. If you look at this here, um, I don't know if you can see that the whole thing is like a sandwich. As I first showed, you've got the PCB at the top. And then there's a little sticky thing in between, you know, these little sticky feet, like pandas or whatever they are, just to extend it and stick it, stick it on. And then the screen. So um, the Game Gear PCB is going to go in the edge there, hence the whole sliding it on. So it should be a really nice, snug fit. Um, yeah, we'll see how easy that is to get on, but it should be nice and tidy and stuff. Um, I wouldn't pull you your screen protector off until you're very 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 near the end uh, you finish doing all the wiring and everything you're about to mount it in your case you know a bit like it with links then clean the inside here just hoover it out make sure you don't got any dust in there use an air compressor or something on it and then just seat your game gear board in there and screw it all in um, and hopefully it should be nice uh, you know after you remove the, the, the film obviously and it should be nice and tidy um, so there's a lot to do um, I'm kind of apprehensive about this a bit like I was with links really just because there's so many little things here, it could be easy to miss something, so I'm going to start by removing, stripping this down obviously, and remove all of these components and I'll just give you an update. Just an update part way here, you can see I've removed some of the components off here, all these little SMD resistors and things. It's a lot harder than I anticipated just because the components are so close to each other, so on a difficulty scale, you know, the Lynx one I would say was easy, this is probably medium to hard actually just because of the, the SMD stuff um, I thought I'd removed an additional resistor down there because you can see there's three lots of pads there where my nail is um, the bottom one there was nothing there actually underneath this cap there was no transistor Q2 um, which was marked on the diagram uh, I think if you look at this diagram here it shows to remove Q2 there were my thumb is um, that wasn't on here so I guess that's why the resistor wasn't there, so I didn't remove an extra resistor because I spent ages trying to find the damn thing and I thought, I don't get it, I don't get where it, where it went, but there wasn't one on mine, so you might find that if you've got a, a two ASIC version like this, you may well find that one of the resistors up there is already missing and the, ca the, the transistor that goes just underneath that cap Q2, which where my thumb is there, that was not here either, it wasn't present on this, so this is working, so it must have been a not required, I don't know, it must have been a, a revision or something. Um, yeah, so a couple of resistors down there removed. Um, I think that's probably it actually on the top side, and obviously the, you know, the cap at the top near the um, transformer there, sorry it's gone blurry here, um, but as you can see just for the moment I've just put the screen, slid the screen in, like you say, you can see it's sandwiched, the bottom of the screen board is underneath the Game Gear PCB, and the top part of the screen is on the top part of the uh, PCB here. In terms of getting the old screen off, you've just got to, I should have shown this really, but you know it's attached like that I think, there. And you've just got to just peel it like a, a, a sellotape like that, you know, gradually, gradually all the way across. Um, you can see I almost got it off there without damaging the actual ribbon. Um, sorry, it's not focusing at all, this is it? It's 
like really blurry. Um, but just down here, yeah, I removed a couple of contacts. But yeah, that screen was on its way out anyway, so I'm not that bothered. It would have been nice to have saved it. And then afterwards, I've cleaned this up with a bit of flux and the solder braid just to make sure the contacts there were nice and clean because I'm going to be soldering onto some of those contacts there. Um, the VCC you can see connected there, which goes over to the other side and connects to the test point down here, test point 10, I think it is. Um, and I've measured the voltage on this, it's like I think under load it's 4.8 volts or something, 4.9, so that's okay. Um, so it really it's just a case of just assembly, you know, putting the screen in. I just fitted it in the case there just to make sure it did fit. Um, you do have to chop off that post, so I haven't smoothed it down or anything. You can see I've just literally two minutes ago just cut off with a pair of wire cutters and then just put the case, the board in there and it fits. I don't even think you need to smooth that down because these standoffs here hold it well above that anyway so there isn't an issue there but you do need to do that. Um, and I do need to do this modification to the shield in here, I've not got around to yet. Remove these four metal prongs so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that actually. It's not going to be that easy I don't think. It's never easy to cut metal like that. Um, I'll have a think about that. I might just bend, you know, continuously bend bend and fold, bend and fold, you know, just keep bending and wobbling them and eventually they might, uh, they should snap off at the, the point where you're bending them. Um, so I'll give that a go, see how I get on with that. Um, but I think the next point with this really is to solder these four tabs to try and hold this in position, but you need to get it dead straight. Uh, one thing you'll notice with this one, if I straighten, you can see the supports here, the little, um, where they join up. If I try and make them totally, totally, totally aligned, like that one there, so it's nice and circular, the hole, um, i do the same with that one. And then if I look at the front side, the screen, can you see the screen's not aligned? We've got a bigger gap here than we have over there. It's just a, a slight mismatch there when he's stuck the, the screen onto the PCB. So I'm just going to just, I'll probably do that by eye, so that the screen looks right like that, so it's nice and square and then probably just join these up here um, and just instead of doing all four to start with I'll just do, perhaps just do one corner and then the other corner diagonally opposite um, just until I'm comfortable you know it's working once I've got everything working stuff then I'll do the other two corners there's no point totally fixing the thing on there um, just need something to hold it in place really while I do the wiring um, so I think the wires like I say looking at the diagram just look at this diagram again it looks like um, I've got this upside down. Yeah, I've got this upside down. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, you can see the connections here are on that um, where the ribbon came off. I didn't realise that. It's not just the cartridge ports. There's just a couple, couple of points on the cartridge port there. But you've got like uh, CL2, D1, D0, DW, D2, D3. Uh, I think it's just like four or five connections to solder onto there. So that again, if you're not very good at soldering, you can see. Uh, hopefully, it's a bit blurry still. You see how fine pitched those are, though. So um, that should be all right. I'll use some KNR or something. I think to to do those particular wires. Just another update part way through here. You can see I've um, got some of the wires here on there. So I've got the clock wire that's really short, just goes in between the two little resistors. And in fact, there's a, a, a position just next to it marked FB, and it's connected to the, the, the point where those two resistors join actually to give you clock. So it's a very short wire there to the clock pin, which is the second pin on the PCB there. The bottom pin is the backlight pin which gets, sorry it's not actually, that's the cart pin, uh, the one that identifies whether it's Game Gear or Master System and that goes over to the other side, uh, pin 2, uh, there, sorry I'm off camera as usual um, I've only mounted the, the LCD with the, that one, or, or, if you like, three blobs of solder there but it's totally aligned, um, you know, and as I say I didn't want to do all of them until I got it just, you know, until made, made sure everything's just right so that's just supporting it, uh, as you can see I've disconnected this flat flex here in case you're wondering, this flat flex, is the connector is one of these ones where you lift you just lift it with your nail very carefully, you be careful you don't go too far because you could pull it straight off so that's that, and you need to do that in order to get access to some of these pads here, that's like button three I think, and then these first top two that I've soldered wires to there, button one and button two, and they go across to the edges of these caps here, in various places. Um, so I've just got, I don't know, another five or six wires to stick on here now, and then hopefully I should be able to test it. So here we go, I've got all the wires on, I'm just going to give this a test. Ah, there we go, it's working. Not sure about the colours or whether that is supposed to be that, yeah I think it is, I think that's right. Um, sweet, that's looking cool. Um, 
So there's not really, I mean I haven't connected the VGA, I've got to do that at some of the point in future, I will do that in a future video as a completely separate thing, um, but right now I want to try and, uh, you know, try and reassemble this um, and then give it a test. Still got the screen protector on here as you can see. I'll show you under the board here, actually just so you can see. Um, what well, One thing of note, well there's a few things I wanted to point out actually while, while I'm here. I tested this part way just to see if it had sound. I was a bit concerned after I removed all the other components and stuff and then attached the power for the screen. I hadn't got any of the clocks and the video, you know, the colour signals and things going to the screen at that point or, or the C-Sync or even the clock, the main clock actually going to the, the LCD mod. But I did wonder if it would power up, you know, and I tested it. I had no sound at all. I spent ages messing around with it, no sound. So I was a bit concerned that I'd done something wrong, but I thought, well, maybe there's some reliance on the screen. There probably is, maybe on the DW pin or something, I don't know. It's looking for something there from the screen in order to uh, boot up, and that wasn't present. Um, but that looks sweet. That really does. Um, sorry, there's a bit of glare from the angle I've got this at, but the colours and things are superb there. It looks great. Um, yeah, that flickering is normal, that's just part of the way the Game Boy works when it's got a certain quantity of sprites on the screen. I think it can only accommodate something like eight sprites or something on at once, and as soon as you get more than that, they flicker. Um, so I'll switch that off, and I'll just show you a few other things. Just a couple of quick tips, really, if you're going to do one of these yourself. Um, the first thing to point out is, do this on a bit of bubble wrap. Once you've got the screen on there, keep a piece of bubble wrap underneath it, and be mindful that you're not getting any bits of metal or, you know, ends of wires and things on there just to totally protect the screen but the other thing I would do is leave your screen protector on but maybe just tape a piece of card or something just over over the screen or something just to help just in case say you drop a blob of solder when you're doing the solder work on the, the, the pins there um, I haven't done that you know I've not damaged it or anything but it was on my mind while I was doing this thinking really I should cover this up with um, you know um, a piece of card or something just in case I drip a tiny 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 blob of solder because the last thing you want is a you know a, a a mark on your screen or something from the way you've uh, dripped some solder on there. The hardest bit by far is this edge down here where you have to solder the wires that go over the other side. That, I mean it's not particularly clean that, you can see that's as good as I can do that and I've inspected it, there's no shorts or anything, I've definitely got the right pins. Uh, I mean you've seen it working anyway so uh, that's a given. But that is the hardest part of this mod without a doubt. Um, and I think my approach of fitting the screen before I joined any of the wires to the screen was the best thing because it meant I could get these wires the right length um, and give yourself a bit of excess length as I've you know I, I attached them underneath here first then I bent it over the side fed it to where it needs to go you know using the reel and then I've cut it you, as you can see there's maybe a centimeter or so on each one of these flexibility so should they become detached from here I can easily just you know strip off the end again and just reattach it and likewise the same here or, or, you, or reposition them if you would solder one in the wrong place you can reposition it without having to cut a whole new length of wire um, what else? The other thing I've not mentioned is this test point 10 here. When it, on the instructions it says measure the voltage at test point 10 should have 5 volts. Now if you've not got a wire going from your VCC pin from I think it recommends under here I haven't done that I took it from oh I did I yeah I did from there um, going to test point 10 you're going to get nothing you won't get 5 volts when you're testing it at that stage so that was uh, I don't know whether it's just a, a typo in the instructions or whether I've just misread it I probably misread it to be fair um, I've already mentioned the resistor there as you can see the three lots of pads the bottom resistor wasn't there on mine um, I don't think there's anything else to say about this one really. Um, I haven't connected, like I say, the um, the stuff to do with the, the VGA at the moment, so the, the contrast thing's not going to do anything at all. Um, I've not not put the wires on there to the board, and I've certainly not got the VGA connector on, but I will at some point probably, I think, revisit that to do that. Uh, I'm not that fussed about VGA output, to be honest. It's, it's the LCD screen that makes the biggest difference um, for me, anyway, that's the thing I'm interested in mostly. Um, so I'll clean up some of these solder points with a bit of I uh, isopop now, I think, and a cotton bud, and then I just um, solder. Um, well, I've got to do the work to this, yeah. I've got to just remove those metal prongs on the back of there, um, and then I'll reassemble it, I think. So with regards to these metal tabs, the easiest way to do that is what I suggested from the start, really, so to bend them over like that. I'll see if I can do this one. It's going to be a bit tricky just because of the position the thing's in. Um, and then it's, you know, bend it right over and then just keep keep doing that like that. And then hopefully, if you get it the right spot, it's very difficult with this one because of the angle on that. 
you know, these two are sort of getting in the way. It might be a bit easier for it this way, actually. Yeah, I might need to just bend that up out of the way for a minute. It's very easy, it's malleable, this. It's very easy to move this around. But if you just keep doing that, like, I can feel that like getting softer. Hopefully that'll snap off in a minute. There you go. That did take uh, a good minute or so, just constantly wobbling it backwards and forwards. But you can see, you know, you can bend this back into shape relatively easy. And you can use, you know, some pliers like this just to straighten it and stuff. And, you, you know, if you've got a really sharp edge there, be careful. You don't want to cut yourself on it. You might want to use some, um, you know, a file or something just to smooth it off if it's still protruding a bit with regards to the case edge. But, uh, yeah, I'll do the same with those two large ones now, and then I should be able to reassemble it. So there we go, you can see it's, it's not perfectly flat there, but it's as good as it's going to get really. I mean, I could spend some time hammering that down and stuff, you know, on a table. Obviously not while it's <laughs> attached in the case there. So I'll get the rest of the uh, guts back in there now. Wow, this is where it's at, the master system stuff. God, it looks amazing. Just because of the higher resolution there. Um, if I switch it off or not, look at the title screen here. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm blown away. Let's just start that. See my old mug there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Wow, that's just sweet. One thing I noticed actually when I was playing that other game, I'll show you Gunstar Heroes, there's some like, artifacts or something in the picture bit of uh, noise or flickering it's, it's like a shimmering type thing going on um, I thought maybe there was something wrong maybe a, a wire running too close to something else um, but uh, and I'll show you the, the, the screen mode thing while I'm doing this as well so if you hold down both all the buttons you see it's changed there you've got like these little stripes down the display there um, sort of like emulating the original screen that looks, looks better in game gear mode that looks better I have to admit so we'll start this this is the Japanese Car. It's probably a bit loud, guys, but I can't hear my voice over, over the volume. Um, can you see this flickering going on here? I think that's an artifact with this particular game that wouldn't normally be very visible on a normal screen. I think that's what that is. We'll try another Game Gear game just to rule it out. I'll stick my EverDrive back in. Uh, I've got to be careful because I've not got the thing screwed back together yet. I'm just, it's just loosely held together. Um, I don't know why this EverDrive doesn't always boot first time, it's a bit weird. Yeah, there we go. So I'm not sure what's going on there. It's that EverDrive, it always does that. It just, it's just a bit glitchy. If we select a game, load a Game Gear game, you can see it's just a little bit off the top of the screen there. Um, yeah, you can see it from that angle. You can see that. It's just off the top a little bit. Um, let's load Bubble Bobble. Wow, that's sweet. I'll put it into the other display mode, actually. I think that's the one with all the lines on it. Yeah, it is just off the top of the screen a bit there. But yeah, I'm not too bothered about that. That's, wow, that's just flipping amazing. Um, this guy is a genius, he really is. I mean, it's not just the electronic side of it, the, you know, what he's input managed to implement here, um, technically. It's the engineering side of it as well. It's does such a good job of getting it all to fit and everything. It's it's like I said, my only negative thing I would say, maybe I just need to adjust this down a little bit. I'd rather have a pic loser pixel at the bottom um, of the screen, one or two, just to gain the one or two from the top. So I haven't soldered all four of those corners of the LCD yet, so I've got the ability to move that around. So I would recommend that you do a similar thing. Do the four solder tabs last. Um, we'll just load another game quickly before the battery goes, see if I can show you something else. And if I switch modes, hopefully you can see the difference of the screen here. If I hold those down, there you go. It's got like a little uh, grainy sort of effect to it, so that's quite cool.
awesome. Wow, that's fantastic. If you've got this bit here loose like it is on mine, you might want to stick this down with a bit of double sided tape. And in actual fact, it could do with padding because it's about a millimetre shy of the screen. You know, the screen doesn't actually mate with that. Uh, so as a result, you could actually get dust floating around in here if you're not careful as well. Um, it's not a big deal, really. Um, but I will stick some double sided tape uh, all around that just to hold that on. Right, so what I thought we'd do here is just try a couple of games. Um, and you can compare them. I'll try. I'll show you on the actual the old screen. This is on the new screen. This is Marble Madness Game Gear version. So we'll start that. So I'm not sure how well the colours are coming across. It looks fantastic to the eyes. It doesn't look quite as good through the viewfinder, I have to admit. So what I'll do now is I'll switch this off and I'll show you on the old screen. So this is the old Game Gear. I mean, look at that already. How washed out that is. Um, this one's quite a good screen actually on this one, this is why I didn't modify this particular one, I want to keep this one. Um, but straight away you can see there, it's, you know, it's, oh God, it's hard to see, it really is turned over there. Yeah, I'm having problems actually seeing this from the air, you get, get, get a really good angle on it. Um, caps have been swapped out on this one as well. So, I'll just show you the, the uh, Master System stuff now. Let's try and compare one of those games. I thought we'd try Double Dragon here. This is the old screen. Um, so, yeah, it's like you get a really blurry effect with Master System games because it's um, quite high resolution, you know, it's quite, I think it's higher resolution anyway than the Game Gear stuff is natively. Um, but you can see how washed out that is, it's just awful. And this is a good screen actually, this one. So I'll swap it over to the new screen now. Look how detailed that is, it's amazing. The colour's fantastic. Yeah, you can just see how much better that is, I mean that really is significant. Fantastic. Yeah, so, I mean, in summary, it's, this is a fantastic mod again. It's uh, sort of, in some ways, it's better than the Lynx mod. Um, just based on the fact, actually, you know, in this Master System mode like this, it looks brilliant, it really does. I don't know what resolution that is, it's like 320 by 240 or something, it just looks mega detailed. Um, but it's also more difficult, so, you know, if you've done any SMD solder in the past, you're not going to struggle with this. But if you're uncomfortable with the surface mount soldering, I'd consider getting McWill to do it for you, um, or someone else, perhaps you know, a local electronics place or something, or someone, someone you might know. Um, you could regret trying to do it yourself, um, I think, just because some of the points there are very small. Um, it's very easy to remove a component that uh, you don't want to remove when you're removing some of the components. And the bit with the ribbon there where you solder onto the uh, edge of the board is quite difficult. Um, even disconnecting the ribbon is quite difficult, I would say. You know, the actual ribbon on the original, on the on the on the actual mod. Um, you lift that little black flap. Well, yeah, I, I've shown on this video. You lift it. You can't even take that as red. By the time you get one, you might have a different flap. It might be the one where you pull the little connector up. So, you know, just be careful and take your time with it. However, you do it. Um, but yeah, thanks, McWill. This is just amazing. You've done a superb job. And um, I haven't got a Nomad, but I know he's looking at doing Nomad um, screen as well. So if you've got a Nomad, keep an eye on uh, his uh, posts and things on Atari Age and perhaps drop him a message and I'm sure he'll let you know when he's got the Nomad screen out there. But um, this is just superb. Yeah, he's done a superb job. Just thought it was worth mentioning actually a couple of things here. Um, the slot was dirty on my Everdrive. Um, that was one reason why it's not always powering on, but it can from time to time, it does it on both of them, Game Gears actually, just sometimes you've got to switch off and on a few times. But one of the things I just noticed, um, it fits on the screen. You see the GG at the top now, it's perfect. So I'm not sure what I've done, maybe it was just a glitch before when I had it on, where it just the sync was just slightly out or something. Because every time I switch it on now, it's it's in the right place on the screen. So we'll try and load Bubble, bubble Bobble again. Um, because I think that was just off the screen a little bit when we played it before.
Yeah, it's fitting on the screen perfectly now, by the looks of things. So I think that was just a glitch. I think there was a glitch there somewhere. I don't know you can see, but it's like it's right on the top, it's round the bottom, just as it should be. So that's just really weird. I'm not sure what would have caused that. Um, I just think it was just. I just do think it was a glitch. It could be related to the other driver. It could be to switching off, and I'm trying to trying to get it to work. But I mean, you know, if I go back to the menu again, you can see it looks perfect. Fits on the screen. Look how detailed it is. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Just put the other scan line mode on so you can see that the uh, you know sort of emulated mode. Okay, there you go. So I don't know you can see that, you get the little lines coming down the screen here. Let's give you a sort of a retro L C D look. Brilliant. Thanks McWill and thanks for watching. See you soon.